So in 2014, I was a part of the Derby City Centers, which is an organization in the Centers of Professional Indulgence. And since I've been so controversial and anti really any gay stereotype, like there's so many negative qualities about the LGB alphabet community, like cannibalism, uh, emotionally and mentally and verbally, and how there's just so much, so, so much hate in a community that preaches love, which is why I'm no longer this person on stage. But that is me on stage, and this is probably the biggest crowd I performed for. The only thing that really sucked for me is that I got in trouble for this outfit. The Derby City Center said it was too provocative, and I'm literally wearing boxer briefs, so it's ridiculous. They said it was just too inappropriate, and they told me I couldn't dance like I normally danced, which when I normally danced, I used my hands a lot, and I touched my body a lot, and they said I shouldn't do that, so all I did was walk around the stage because I didn't feel comfortable doing anything else. So I love this picture because if you zoom in right here, there's two people in purple. The guy is my dad, the one with the sunglasses. The woman next to him, uh, to his right, or to his left, I mean, is my mother. And then the woman in purple to her left is one of my childhood friends. And we go back very far. Uh, but yeah, so... And I actually kicked that ball in the air. It was a really fun experience. It was just dampened because I was being censored by an organization that preaches about uh, doing whatever you want without stigma of guilt. And they're telling me that this outfit is too risque and too inappropriate to wear at a gay pride event. That's a lot of clothes for most gay pride events. And the fact that they told me I couldn't dance the way I normally danced, which left me just to walk around the stage. I couldn't even roll around the stage like Madonna. It was just a mess. It was just a mess. And it was all because I was being restricted and censored. So even though I don't, like regardless of doing what I wanted to do and doing what I had to do, this is meaningless. This whole event has no meaning in my life. It had no worth. It had a little vain, empty worth back then. But performing at Pride isn't a huge accomplishment in the real world. It isn't an accomplishment in the real world. It's a big accomplishment in the alphabet community, but that's just a, a, a sect of the real world. Most of the real world would be like, oh, that's cool. You performed at Pride? Cool. Next subject. So it doesn't, I don't hold too much regret on the fact that my performance was restricted heavily and all that stuff. Just looking at it is sad that at one of my highest points in the gay community, the gay community was censoring me and restricting me. And they're all about acceptance and love and all this BS when they're not really all about it. They just want to be accepted in love. They will not accept and love others. And that is very sad that at the highest point, the most climatic point of my gay persona of that time in my 20s was completely censored and restricted by the same people who asked for love and acceptance. That is so hypocritical. And that is why, that's just one reason why, and if you watch my videos, there's many more reasons why, whether it's grooming or assault or, or alcohol or drugs, there's just always a vice within the gay community. And I'm not saying a gay singularly, like me or a normal person, like my best friend or other people, like by themselves, they're not that bad. But for some reason, when you get a bunch of the alphabet community in a group, things get weird. Things get violated. Things get restricted. Things get hated. Things get talked about. Things get hurt. There's just so much negativity in the alphabet community. And so that is why nowadays in my 30s, I am no longer that person. I have moved and ascended to a new platform, which is more of one who is who I am at a core, I've always been religious, whether it's me hunting other religions or what, I've always had a foundation in Catholicism, and being able to be Catholic is something that I was not able to do in the gay community, because you won't believe the amount of hate the alphabet community has for Christians in general, not just Catholics, but all Christians, there's a whole lot of hate, and they'll probably say, well, we got hated on first, so two wrongs make a right? No. 
Anyways, as I was saying, it's just really sad that on, which one's my favorite picture? It's one of my parents. It's this one. Uh, basically, it's really sad that at the pinnacle of my gay persona, I was restricted and censored by the gays. You know what I should have done? Is I should have ripped off my clothes even more and danced all crazily just to do what I wanted to do. And I'm pretty sure the crowd would love it. And the sister or the sinners would be like, oh my, they'd be like squawking chickens, squawking chickens. And I'm sure I'd probably get kicked out or something because I refuse to be censored and restricted by them. They're hypocrites. They are hypocrites. And now they're led by Christopher Thomas, who is one of the biggest hypocrites. And if you're a hurt person and an evil person, it shows up physically. And just look at his face without makeup. God bless.